Every week, the program Sports Nation introduces you to the main events of Kazakhstan and world sports. We cover large tournaments, find outstanding heroes, and open doors to the best sports arenas in the country. In today's program, we'll visit the new Academy of Females Wrestling in Astana, talk to the head coach of the national football team, Stanimir Stoilov, and we'll find out how the traditional Taekwondo differs from the Olympic. Now briefly about the main news of the week. The national football team of Kazakhstan will hold a friendly match with Azerbaijan. The game will be held on June 5th at the stadium Astana Arena. It will be the ninth game for both teams. Previously, Kazakhstan won three times and Azerbaijan twice. The other three times, it was a draw. In the updated ranking of FIFA teams, our team is on 119th place. It went 17 lines up. Last month, our players had two friendly matches. They defeated Hungary with a score 3-2 and lost to Bulgaria with a score 1-2. The strongest team in the world is still German national team. Brazil comes next. Belgians come third. Kokshetau Arlans became the new champion of Kazakhstan in hockey. In the final series, the Wolves were stronger than the capitals Nomad and won with a score 4-2. For the club, which was founded in 2009, this gold is the first in the championship of Kazakhstan. The world champion of 2013, Zhenibek Alimkanola, moved to professional boxing. In January, a 25-year-old athlete announced his retirement from the national team of Kazakhstan and thought about ending his career. At the last national championship, Alim Kanala sensationally lost the first battle to a 19-year-old Mikhail Kukanchik. Next on Sports Nation, a small excursion to the Academy of Females Wrestling in Astana. Come in, here is our dining room. Our chefs are standing here. Our dinner is ready. We tell the cooks in advance what we need. When someone needs to lose weight, they cook according to a special menu. Everything an athlete needs is here at the disposal of sportswomen. They have a special menu and a special dinner. Aigul Nuralim, a member of the Kazakhstan national team for females wrestling, introduced us to the new base of the national team. This is where we live. These are hotel rooms. This room is designed for five people. A small room can accommodate two girls. A big one, three. Everything is located in one building. You can work out here, go to the bath. We have fitness rehabilitation center and a massage room. The women's national wrestling team is a new home. The federation says they deserve it. At the last Olympic Games in Rio, wrestlers created a small sensation after winning three medals. It is here where the national team will prepare for the Asian Games and the Olympic Games of 2020. In the world, women's wrestling is developing very quickly. If earlier very strong sportsmen were from Asia, for example from Japan and China, now the stars of wrestling are typically from Latin America or African states. The teams of Nigeria, Tunisia, they are very strong. If earlier there were only two, three leaders at the world championships in one weight category, now there are more more than 10. Rapid development of females wrestling started after the first successful performance of the team at the World Championships in Baku in 2007. The former leaders have already completed their careers. And now the main team looks significantly renewed. The main backbone of the team is the young athletes. We have a lot of prize winners of world championships among juniors. They are already the main backbone of the team. Three medals at the last Olympic Games give them a good motivation. For the girls, they are wonderful conditions. In addition to the academy, the Olympic Committee and the Ministry are helping financially. They are bonuses, salaries for wrestlers. Earlier, such a center for training masters of freestyle was only in Almaty. Now the girls have a great opportunity to focus on achieving great results. Coming up on Sports Nation, Stanimir Stoilov about the goals of the national team, the younger generation and the main problem 
of Kazakhstan football. Bulgarian specialist Stanimir Stailov is outstanding phenomenon in Kazakhstan football history. Astana Football Club started to achieve the current heights just as he arrived. For four seasons, the capital team became the champion of the country and made its way to the group stages of European competition. In March, Stailov led the national team of Kazakhstan. Football fans are waiting for change. Stoilov or Stoilov? Can you clear that up? In Bulgarian language, it is Stoilov. I'm not offended. If it is easier for people to pronounce the way they do, I'm fine with it. But Stoilov is the right pronunciation. Yes, Stoilov is correct. When there was an option to lead the national team of Kazakhstan, and how much time it took you to think about this offer? Honestly, I did not expect an offer to lead the team. I know all the problems of Kazakhstan football. I know the strengths and weaknesses of football players. I know that 136th place in the FIFA rating does not respond to the level of football players that are in Kazakhstan. For four years, I have seen how people were worried about the team. No matter where Astana has played, everyone congratulated them, said bravo, good fellows. And the second question was, when will you help the team? After the success of Astana in Eurocups, interest towards your persona has grown significantly. There were offers from foreign clubs of Qatar, Turkey and China. Why did you decide to stay? There were several serious offers from a financial point of view, but nothing that could seriously interest me. I would like to be in any European team that can play in European competition. But I didn't want to leave for the sake of the financial offer and simply to change the club for money. Money is not the most important thing for you. No. I played football for so many years, including abroad. Then I worked for many years as a coach. I never felt a great financial need. I cannot say that they pay me little here. They pay me very well. To me personally, it's not about how much money I can make, but how much pleasure and happiness I can bring people, that's what matters. I'll quote you. It's hard to get into European club with a Bulgarian passport. Is there any discrimination? This is called in Bulgarian Oris or fate. We need to fight. Wait for a moment. I think that people from Western Europe get there easier. Specialists from Portugal, Spain, Germany, even there is no substantial experience, they find it easier to settle in the East, in Bulgaria, Russia, Kazakhstan and Azerbaijan. In 2013, Astana lost to Botev, which you headed from Bulgaria, in the qualifying stage of the European League, with a total score of 0-6. to six. Was it the first acquaintance with Kazakhstan football? No, I've watched Kazakhstan teams before. I knew Atrau, they played with Levski. At the time there was the same difference between clubs. I knew Tobol, Kairat and Aktobe. What kind of impression you had from that match? The game in Astana was equal. I really liked the city and the football, which Astana team played. But our players were slightly more organized and a bit more confident. Upon your arrival to Kazakhstan, you had a big interview. You said that you were surprised by the attitude of the players towards the game. You said that the players are lazy. Has anything changed? Many things have changed in Astana. First of all, we convinced the players that they can actually play. I said that they were lazy, because with their great potential, they demonstrated very few skills on the field. The entire coaching staff, the club's management, the players did a great job, because not everyone can see what kind of work is being done to make Astana a European team.
The question of the development of football in Kazakhstan is now very serious. If you do not start creating fields and conditions now, then it will be very hard afterwards. We say this every year, but nothing changes. Or something changes, but then we go backwards. If there are no strong championship and good players, there won't be a strong team. In addition to the fact that there are Astana and Kairat teams, other teams are closer to their level, or do they still need to work hard to reach their level? I think they still need to work very hard. All football players know that you are a supporter of strict order in everything. Discipline is more important to you than the talent of a player. You know, with talent, you can win one game, even two or three. But with the organization and football discipline, you can win 25 games. I need players who will fight for their team. We observe discipline in everything. Many players now realize that we drove them and scolded them, punished them. They realized that all this was for the good. It's easier and better. Bauer Jan Jelchiev is an example of how one can lose talent. He was an excellent player and worked perfectly for the team. He lost his talent due to large financial requests. While he was looking for his millions, he lost his football. Over the last years, the team had the same problem. We played friendly matches with the same teams. How to solve the problem of lack of friendly matches with strong teams? We tried to organize two matches with teams that are much higher than us in the FIFA ranking. Matches with Bulgaria and Hungary are the result of good work of the Federation, and it was easier for me to negotiate with Bulgaria. Now we select teams at the level of Georgia. In a match with Hungary, Dmitry Shumko came out to the field with a captain's armband. At a match with Bulgaria, a captain's armband was in Barjan Islamhan, who is the leader of the team. I do not have any problem with it, that if I want to, there will be many captains. One captain will not help us. I always give the captain's armband to players who have played many games for the national team, who have experience. Each game can have a different captain, because we don't have a player like Smakov, who played for the national team for 20 years. If there was Muzhikov on the match with Hungary, he would be the captain. There was a trend at one time when we attracted guys from Germany who were born in Kazakhstan to the national team. There was Schmidtgal. We had Engel. Is there a need to do similar searches again? If they have a Kazakhstan passport or Kazakh roots, we will look for them. So far we haven't found them. I will be very happy if we find a player who performs in the Bundesliga or in Russia, for example, because their championships are stronger than the championship we have in Kazakhstan. You are well acquainted with Kazakhstan football at the moment. Do you have enough bench warmers at the national team? Honestly, very little. What positions are the most weak? Lots of positions are weak. If there are new players who can help the team, then we'll be happy to take them to the team. We need competition. You are one of the few who can openly criticize the level of football management in the country. Now that you are at the helm of the main team of the country, do you have the opportunity to influence the development of football? I can only speak from my personal view. And if someone from the heads of clubs 
wants to get my advice on the development or the creation of infrastructure. I do not want to go into the tactics or selection of a particular club, but there are big questions about the infrastructure that need to be raised. I will give you one example. When you play on the field of Astana Arena, you play one football. Then when you're on the road, you play a completely different football. You practice different football every week. No field, no organization. Changing rooms, showers are built 100 years ago. Everything smells. There is no water. Fans also have horrible conditions. Journalists, too, have no conditions. I think that it is necessary to be decisive here, otherwise nothing will change. A new generation, which is on the way to become a new base of the national team, does it inspire any optimism in you? Just a little. Look at this generation and count how many games they played. Seyd Ahmed only once played for youth team. Zainuddinov played only three or four games. We need to let them play big games in advance. Pirtsukh. He's already 21 years old. In his years, I scored more than 150 goals in a professional career. You are not a supporter of defensive football. It's 100% not my style. Because I cannot stand at the bench and see that our gates are in danger every minute. I can't take it. When it will be necessary to defend, we will. Do you have the maximum goals for the national team? If you do not set maximum goals, then you do not need to play. It is clear that the maximum goals are hard to fulfill, because we lag behind very much. When I leave, I will leave a team that will be able to play for a few more years at a high level. Thank you. We believe in the team. We believe in you. Good luck. Thank you so much. In just a few moments, trainer Nurlana Benov will try to explain why Taekwondo is an art. Stay tuned. Discipline, responsibility and serious attitude towards training. Despite the very young age, for these guys, Taekwondo is no longer just a sports section, but a special lifestyle. Most importantly, we make sure that they understand that discipline is at the forefront here. It's strict where it needs to be. Therefore, we cannot run or talk here. They clearly understand that we have to conduct ourselves accordingly. Modern Taekwondo dates back to 1950s. It was popularized by a South Korean general and it was included in military training in his country. Later, single combat came to the post-Soviet countries. Conditionally, Taekwondo is divided into two types, traditional and Olympic. Our young people try to work as hard as they can, fight with their feet and hands. In the Olympic Taekwondo, punches are prohibited. It is okay to send a child to Taekwondo from an early age and with any physical training. Each training has its own specialization. One workout is in stretching. There is a certain warm-up and exercises. Another training session is devoted to percussion technique. We teach to fight lying down, standing up with support and in motion. The gradation of the belts is very simple, from white to black. White, yellow, green, blue, red, then comes a black belt. Some of our trainees can break boards with bare feet and hands at the age of six, with both a fist and a palm. A child becomes more patient and diligent. Those who come to train with us often stays for a very long time. By tradition, 
we conclude our program with the video of the week. Today the choice of the editorial board fell on the video shot by Paul Davis, a former professional football player. The guy seems to be bored with office life and he again took out his boots.